As she stepped out of her carriage and gazed up at the grand palace before her, a strange feeling washed over her. She couldn't explain it, but she felt as though she had been here before, as though she had a connection to this place that she couldn't quite put her finger on. She shook her head and dismissed the feeling as she was greeted by the palace's servants. Welcome, your highness, they said, bowing respectfully. She nodded, her mind racing. Her name was Mai, and she was the daughter of a prominent noble in the Tang dynasty. She had been summoned to the palace by the empress, who had offered her a position as a lady-in-waiting. As she made her way through the palace, Mai couldn't shake the feeling that she had been here before. The intricate designs on the walls, the ornate furniture, even the scent of the incense burning in the air seemed familiar somehow. When she reached her quarters, Mai noticed a small book on the desk. It was a journal, and as she opened it, she realized it belonged to one of the previous lady-in-waiting. As she began to read, she was struck by a sense of familiarity. The words seemed to resonate with her on a deep level, as though they were her own memories. The more she read, the more certain she became that she was the reincarnation of the previous lady-in-waiting. She felt as though she had lived this life before, as though she knew the people and the events that the journal had described. But if that were true, then what was she to do? How could she navigate the consequences of her past actions? And how could she convince anyone else that she was, in fact, the reincarnation of a historical figure? As she pondered these questions, Mai realized that she had a unique opportunity. She could use her knowledge of her past life to prevent some of the tragedies that had befallen her in the past, to make a difference in the world in a way that she never could have before. As Mai settled into her role as a lady-in-waiting, she found herself drawn to the Empress, who reminded her of someone from her past life. She couldn't shake the feeling that she knew the Empress from before, and she found herself wanting to protect her at all costs. One day, as Mai was walking through the palace gardens, she overheard a group of officials talking. She couldn't believe what she was hearing. How could they even consider overthrowing the Empress? Mai knew that she had to act fast to prevent this from happening. She quickly made her way back to the palace and found the Empress in her chambers. Your Highness, I must speak with you, Mai said, her voice trembling with urgency. The Empress looked up from her embroidery, surprised by Mai's sudden appearance. What is it, Mai? Is everything all right? Mai took a deep breath and composed herself. Your Highness, I overheard a group of officials plotting to overthrow you and install their own candidate on the throne. I don't know who they are, but I knew that I had to come and warn you. The Empress's eyes widened in shock. My goodness, Mai, this is a serious matter. We must act quickly. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. As they sat in the Empress's chambers, poring over scrolls and maps, Mai felt a sense of connection to the Empress that she couldn't quite explain. It was as though she had known her in a past life, as though they were kindred spirits. Your Highness, Mai said suddenly, breaking the silence. May I ask you a question? The Empress looked up from the scroll she was reading. Of course, Mai. What is it? Mai hesitated for a moment before speaking. Your Highness, I can't explain it, but I feel as though I know you from before. As though we've met in another life. The Empress smiled warmly. Mai, I too have felt a connection with you from the moment we met. I can't explain it either, but I believe that there is something special between us. Mai felt a sense of relief wash over her. She wasn't alone in her feelings, and she knew that she could trust the Empress with her secret. As Mai continued to navigate life in the palace, one day, she was strolling through the palace gardens, enjoying the warm sun on her skin and the fragrant scent of blooming flowers in the air. As she turned a corner, she nearly collided with a young man who was walking in the opposite direction. Oh, I'm sorry, Mai said, her heart racing as she looked up at him. It's quite all right, the young man replied, a warm smile spreading across his face. I'm Lee, a humble scholar. And you are? I'm Mai, the Empress's lady-in-waiting she replied, feeling her cheeks flush under his gaze. From the moment they met, Mai felt a connection with Lee. They spoke for hours, wandering through the gardens and discussing their favorite books, music, 
and art. They had so much in common, and my felt as though she had known him for years. As they parted ways, Lee took Mai's hand and said, I hope to see you again soon, Mai. There's something about you that I can't quite put my finger on. Mai felt a flutter in her chest at his words, and she knew that she was falling for him. She spent the next few days thinking of Lee, daydreaming about their conversations and the way his smile lit up his face. Finally, they met again in the palace library, where they spent hours poring over ancient texts and debating their interpretations of the classics. Mai couldn't help but feel drawn to Lee's intellect and his passion for knowledge. Mai felt that she could trust Lee regarding the private information of the Empress's assassination. Both of them decided to go around the palace and collect information discreetly. On the afternoon of the Emperor's birthday, they came to know that the plot to kill the Empress had been set in place. Mai's heart raced as she and Lee made their way to the throne room, their hands tightly clasped together. They had just received word that a group of officials was planning to assassinate the Empress at the evening banquet, and they knew they had to act fast to prevent it from happening. As they burst into the throne room, they were met with a scene of chaos. The Empress was surrounded by her advisors, all of them frantically trying to come up with a plan to keep her safe. Your Highness, Lee said, bowing respectfully. We have information that there is a plot to assassinate you tonight. The Empress looked at them in shock. What? Who would dare to do such a thing? My stepped forward, her voice firm. It is the same group of officials who seek to overthrow your reign and put their own candidate on the throne. We must act quickly to prevent this from happening. The Empress nodded. We must act quickly to stop this plot from unfolding. With the Empress's support, Mai and Lee were able to put together a plan to prevent the assassination attempt. They worked tirelessly, gathering information, gathering allies, and formulating a strategy. As the evening banquet approached, Mai and Lee were ready. They positioned themselves strategically around the room, keeping a watchful eye on the Empress at all times. Suddenly, there was a commotion at the entrance to the banquet hall. A group of officials had arrived, armed and ready to carry out their plot. But Mai and Lee were one step ahead. They sprang into action, disarming the officials and preventing them from carrying out their plan. The Emperor himself arrived on the scene, looking on in disbelief as Mai and Lee presented the would-be assassins to him. Your Majesty, Mai said, bowing respectfully. We have prevented an attempt on the life of the Empress. The Emperor looked at them in awe, his eyes filling with pride. You have done a great service to the Empire. I am in your debt. And with that, he issued a decree for Mai and Lee to be married, recognizing their bravery and dedication to the Empire. Mai and Lee exchanged a look, their hearts full of joy. They had not only saved the Empress but had also found their way to each other, their love strengthened by their shared mission to protect the Empire. Thank you for listening.